my name is Isioma and in this video I will be showing you 10 Mac tips and tricks I wish I knew sooner. I'll be using my M1 13 inch MacBook Air to show you all of these tips and tricks. These tips do work on both iMacs and MacBooks, however some features will only work for devices with an M1 chip or later. If you like productivity and tech related content then follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Without further ado let's get straight into the video feature slash tip I'm going to be showing you guys is a feature called split screen. This feature allows you to have two apps open side by side. To enable this feature all you have to do is hover over this green button and then click tile window to left screen and then choose what window you would like open at the same time. You do have to make sure that you have two apps open at the same time. You can't go into split screen and then suddenly open a new app. The apps already have to be open in order for this to work. I usually have my emails open at the same time as my calendar. This feature is also perfect for students. You can write your assignments and have your case studies or your research open at the same time. You can also have two tabs open at the same time. So let's say on one tab you have Google and then on the next tab you have, let's just put a random website. So if you want to split your screen and have both of these tabs side by side, you will just click on one tab and drag it away and then hold down or hover over this green button and click tile window to left screen and then just select your other screen and now you've got two tabs open at the same time you can scroll on both of them at different times as well and you can type on each one separately also going to show you is one of my favorite trackpad gestures so to switch between full screen apps on your mac you can use three fingers and swipe to the left or right instead of having to minimize your current app and open a new one just use three fingers on your trackpad and swipe left and right this only works if you have one or more apps that are open in full screen so to open an app in full screen you just click on the green icon and it will fill the screen or the app to the entire page and then just use three fingers and slide left or right to switch between apps easily if you like to listen to music from your mac whilst you work then this next tip is perfect for you so if you want to be able to easily access your music, you can actually click on your control center and drag this music widget up to your menu bar. And now you can click this widget here to start whatever song you were last playing. Let's, what was I last listening to? No idea. But yeah, besides the point, you can now click on this widget and it will play whatever song you already had playing. This just avoids you having to open the music app or having to click on the control center and then click on music. You can just select from here and then you can change the song here so you can fast forward, pause, rewind, etc. So if you have several windows open and you actually need them all and cannot close them, enabling stage manager will create an organized view that shows you what apps are open. To enable stage manager just open up your settings and then go to desktop and dock and just scroll down to stage manager and click on the toggle now you've enabled stage manager and it's showing me every single app i have open so i have the app store open i have canva open i have my notes open and it's showing all of these apps along the left hand side the one annoying thing about stage manager is your apps are not full screen in this view but you can drag from the edges to make the screen bigger or you can just put the apps into full screen mode and then just click S when you want to come out and then when you come out you can view what apps you still have open. To disable stage manager you can either go back to your settings and then click on desktop and dock or you can go to your control center and click this button and it will disable stage manager and now the apps are all disorganized again and I can't tell what's open and what's not and this is the view with stage manager. tip slash trick I'm going to be showing you is the image slash video preview option. If you want to view an image or a video on your Mac without opening QuickTime Player or any other app, just hit spacebar on your keyboard and you'll open up a blown up view of the image you're looking at or if it's a video, the video will play the minute you hit spacebar. And if you want to close this view, just click on spacebar again. This is just a good alternative if you don't want to have to open a document and then close it again. This also works with PDF files as well. You can actually press spacebar and then you'll be able to see the number of pages on the PDF as well. And you can view each page without actually opening up the PDF. 
So the next tip slash trick I'm going to be showing you is a background eraser. So Max actually come with a built-in background eraser so you can get rid of the backgrounds from your images by right clicking on your image, scrolling down to quick actions and clicking on remove background. Now as you can see it's not 100% accurate but it is very good considering it is free. So this is the image before and it had a red background and this is the image after with the background gone. There are little bits and bobs here where you can still see the red but you can always use a website like remove.bg to get rid of this. The next trick that I'm going to show you comes in very handy if you're a graphic designer who handles very big images or you're a website designer or you're a social media manager or you're just a content creator. Either way, you'll find this feature very useful. So Macs actually have a feature where you can reduce a file size, specifically images, if they're really big. So as you can see here, this file is actually 17.1 megabytes. So if you want to reduce this file size, for example, if you design on Shopify, you know that there is a file limit, so you cannot add images of a certain size onto Shopify. To make this image smaller without actually losing a lot of quality, you're just going to right click on the image, scroll down to quick actions, and then click on convert image. Now here you've got this box that allows you to change the format of the file so you can change it from a JPEG to a PNG and then you, here you can change the image size so you can change it to a small file which would be 22, 81, would be medium or large is 276. I usually go for actual size or large so actual size will bring the file down to 1.9 megabytes so it's gone from 17.1 megabytes to 1.9 and you can barely tell a difference in terms of quality. This is the image the bigger image and this is the compressed image and as you can see there's very very little difference but yet the file has gone down by over 10 megabytes so if you are like me and prefer mouses to trackpads then you probably hate the fact that mac trackpads do not automatically allow you to right click i think usually you have to use two fingers and press down on the trackpad to get um extra options so if you do want to enable right clicking on your trackpad the same way you would click right on your mouse, then all you're going to do is you're going to open up your system settings I'm going to scroll down and click on trackpad. And then where it says secondary click, you're going to select the option that says click in bottom right corner. So this just means now you can right click on images. So I will show you an example. If I wanted to download an image off of Google, let's say heart. I think usually you'd have to use two fingers to try and press down on the icon and when you do that sometimes it will just open the image instead of actually giving you secondary options. Now that you've enabled the right click, once you click on the bottom right corner of your trackpad, you now have all of these extra options so you can copy your image, save the image, copy the link address, etc. This is great if you are very used to working with a mouse because you know with a mouse you can right click and it gives you other options. So I like enabling this setting on all of my MacBooks just because it allows me to continue what I'm used to. You know, I'm used to mouses. I prefer mouses. If I had my way, I would buy an external mouse for my iPad, for my MacBook, for everything. I just prefer mouses to trackpads. But yeah, that is how to enable right clicking on your trackpad. If you want to see all of the apps you have open in either full screen mode or just open as tabs, then what you're going to do is you're going to use three fingers and you're going to swipe upwards to access mission control. And mission control just offers a bird's eye view of all of your open windows and desktop spaces. And under desktop, it will always have your apps that are just open normally. Any of your apps that are open full screen will show up on another slide. So if I open up my Google Chrome and I put it on full screen and then I swipe up with three fingers, as you can see, it's created a whole new space. This feature I'm going to be showing you is how to increase your volume and brightness on your Mac in smaller increments. So as you can see, when you press the volume button on your keyboard, your volume jumps up by one whole bar. Same with the brightness, it jumps up and down by one whole bar. If you want it to go up in smaller increments or down, what you're going to do is you're going to hold down shift and option on your keyboard and then you're going to press the volume up or volume down button. As you can see, instead of the sound jumping up by one whole bar, it's going up in increments instead. Same thing works with the brightness, just hold down shift and option, then press 
brightness up or brightness down to go down in smaller increments and that is all the mac tips and tricks i will be sharing today this video was super short just because i wanted to get straight to the point if you do want a part two or you have any questions about the tips that i spoke about in this video then do leave a comment down below if you found this video helpful helpful then like comment subscribe and share this video and i will see you in the next video